Hello there! Ever wondered if and how the map editor of Cube 2 Sauerbraten, German for Sauerrosen, works? Why, there is a comprehensive readme about all its features, a video sometimes might help more. Also, there is a lot to know about the mapping features of this game and game engine which users might otherwise overlook. Hi, my name is Vortex Acrewantic and in this and the following episodes we will learn how to create our very own map in Cube 2 Sauerbraten. Not just for playing multiplayer, but also how to build single player campaigns. Create, save and load a map. Creating a new map in Cube 2 is rather simple. Simply press T in the main menu and a text input should appear in the lower left of the screen. In here, type slash new map followed by its size. While the size can be any value between and including 10 to 20. After pressing enter, the game will load up a new empty map. To give you an idea what each size means, the smallest map size can be walked in 9 seconds from one side to the other, while on a map with size 20, it would take about 8 minutes and 20 seconds to walk a straight line from one side to the other. In the screenshot shown on screen I try to visualize these different dimensions, while the smallest one can barely be seen from above. Also, by increasing the map size by 1 will make it twice as large as the previous size. This means 11 is twice as large as 10. Also, I do recommend using the largest map size only if there really really is a need for this. Despite being extremely huge and even with 32 players on the map you will barely meet each other. It will also break some engine performance optimizations, as well as you may run out of memory while calculating light maps and hence end up with broken shadows. Or just run out of entities to place around the map to make it look more interesting. Also, if you take a close look to the player models, they start wiggling, which means the precision of the overall game is reduced as well. If you notice the map size you have chosen at the start of your project was too little, you can at any given time increase the map size by two times. Simply press T to bring up the text input in the lower left of the screen and enter slash map enlarge, or using the in-game UI. Escape, editing, map, increase map size two times. This will add new space to the borders of the original map without overwriting what you have already been working on. Of course, we also want to save our work from time to time. For this, simply press T and enter slash save map followed by the map name. This will save the current map by the name you have chosen. However, make sure to not use spaces. If you do not want to enter the map's name on every save, you can also write slash save current map or use the in-game UI. Escape, editing, map and enter a name into the text area below save map and hit enter. Also, the map can be quick saved by pressing F5. After creating a new map, I recommend to save and right away load it up before doing any modifications. Because without loading the map first, Sauerbraten will save our map as untitled if we are using F5, even if you once have executed any save command with a name supplied. Because, as we created the map, it did not have a name. Therefore, we load it, so the game knows which map we are actually working on. To load a map, you can do it by pressing T and enter slash mode 1. This will ensure the game mode is set to co-op editing, as the editing tools are not available in all game modes. Also, it will ensure there is no timer running in the background, because another game mode was active before. One thing we don't want is that in the middle of something the game ends, loads up a new map and all our unsafe changes are lost. Then press T once more and enter slash map, followed by the name of the map you want to edit. Of course, sooner or later the question arises where the heck are my map files stored, especially if we have forgotten the name of it. On Windows, map files are stored at C, Users, followed by your username, Documents, My Games, Sauerbraten, Packages, Base. On Linux, map files are stored at Home, followed by your username, Sauerbraten, Packages, Base. Or if using the Flatpak home followed by your username dot bar app org dot sauerbraten dot sauerbraten dot sauerbraten packages base. Cursor. Now that we know how to create, save and load a map file, we want to actually start building it. After creating or loading a map, press E to enter edit mode. This will enable fly mode, disable the player's hitbox, which means you can now fly through everything and also you should notice a white selection next to the crosshair. This is our editing cursor. By scrolling the mouse wheel up or down, we can pull and push cubes into the ground or out of it. But let us take a closer look at the cursor and it is important to understand it properly. 
Click with the left mouse button on one of the highlighted squares. If now moving the view, you will notice that there are now two cursors. One next to the crosshair and one steady at the location where we have clicked. If we now scroll up or down using the mouse wheel, the steady selection will be modified instead of the one we are looking at. By pressing space we can unselect the steady selection and now the cube we look at will be modified if using the mouse wheel again. Click on one square and pull out one cube out of the ground and fly closer to it so we can see the whole selection. By looking closer you will notice the cube has one white face and also blue ones as well as a little red cube at one of its corners. Also if looking at one of the blue faces the selection will turn white. Understanding this is vital. First off, the white face, which does not follow the crosshair, is the currently active face in which direction the mouse wheel will pull or push. The blue faces are inactive. By looking at one of the blue faces and pressing the right mouse button, we'll turn it white and the previously white face will become blue. This way, we can change the direction in which the mouse wheel will pull and push cubes to. The tiny red cube marks the origin of our selection. This is important if we want to copy, paste or rotate parts of our map. Selecting an entire region can be done by left click one cube, then looking at another one and press the right mouse button. Now we can pull and push the entire region. You will notice it also has blue faces as well as a red origin. We will learn more about the origin later on. Also, we can at any time increase the region not just horizontally but also vertically by right clicking outside of the current selection. As we do not want our map to look like Minecraft, there is one more thing to know about the selection. We can use the middle mouse button to select only one half of a cube. While doing so, we can drag the view around to select more faces. If we now use the mouse wheel, we can modify the edges without creating new cubes. This way we are able to create smoother edges, circles or even ramps. Finally, we can also increase the so-called grid power. This will allow us to pull and push bigger or smaller cubes. To change the grid power, hold down G and use the mouse wheel to increase or decrease the grid size. We can inspect the current grid power by taking a look at the lower left of the screen. There should be a tiny text grid power with a number next to it. That is the current power. With these basics, we can now start building our map. As an exercise, I recommend try building a well and a tower. Copy, paste, move, undo and redo. As it can be a daunting task to remodel the same thing over and over again, we should also learn about copying and pasting geometry. First, simply select a thing you have already been built and take a look at where the tiny red cube is pointing at. This is the origin of our selection as previously explained. By pasting the selected geometry, our button will paste it from this origin and replace everything in the way of the selection, except for empty spaces. Therefore, be careful where the origin is and where the rest of our selection is pointing to. Press C to copy a selection and then click on any location on your map and press to paste it back into the world. If you by accident paste it into the ground, you do not have to remove it and repaste it. Instead, just move it into the actual location you want it to be. For this, hold down left shift and the right mouse button, then move the selection to a new location. By letting go of either the mouse button or shift, we will then move the selected object to the new location. By not using left shift but just holding down the right mouse button, you can move the selection without also moving the geometry inside. If you want to fix an accident, you can also press Z to undo recent actions or press I to redo recent actions. Of course, you can also use a command prompt for this by writing slash undo or slash redo, but it is very inconvenient. As an exercise, we might want to copy the tower, so we have two of them. Mirror, rotate and scale. We can not just only copy and paste geometry, we can also rotate, flip or even scale them up or down. For this, select the thing you want to rotate and hold down R while moving the mouse wheel. Pay attention to the white face of our selection as this indicates the axis at which the object will be rotated. Change the active faces by using the right mouse button. For mirroring a selection, simply press X. By changing the selected side of the volume, we can also change the mirroring plane. 
Scaling things up and down can be done by copying something by pressing C. Then changing the grid power and paste the geometry. It now should have changed its size according to the grid power. Letters, stairs and ramps. We can also build ladders, stairs and ramps to allow players to walk up or down. For this we will need most of the things we have already learned. Stairs. Let us begin with the easiest way of moving up or down by building a stair. For this, it is important to know that the grid power a player can walk up is 2 or less. Slopes which exceed the size of a cube of grid power 2 will act as a wall. Therefore, to build stairs lower the grid power to 2 or less and pull cubes out of the ground. Ramps. Ramps are also relatively easy to build. For this, we require the half cube select mode by using the middle mouse button. Simply build a staircase as shown before and then push the edges of one step down to the step below. If you have finished one part of the ramp, you may copy and paste it to speed up the process. Ladders. Ladders are a combination of ramps and stairs. Start by modeling a stair as shown before. Then remove every second layer of cubes to form rungs. That's basically it. By building steeper stairs you can build steeper ladders. As rungs are usually not floating all by themselves, we can also model a very steep ramp left and right from our ladder. One important note, we cannot build vertical ladders in Sauerbraten. They need to be slightly shifted, otherwise they will just act as a wall with holes. High maps. One advanced modeling feature are high maps. High maps allow for easier modeling of hills and valleys. Simply select a region and press H. The selection next to the crosshair should now turn green. If we now pull or push geometry using the mouse wheel, we can create hills and valleys. Using what we have learned earlier by changing the push and pull directory, we can also use this tool to modify walls. Pressing F3 will open up the brush selection screen for the high map tool to change how the geometry should be transformed. One important note, do not mix grid powers by using high maps as these might cause unwanted distortion, since there are only 8 steps by which half cubes can be pushed or pulled. As this limitation also applies to the high map tool, not all grid sizes can be properly merged with each other. Therefore, my advice is to build the landscape first and then fill it with buildings. Tips As it can be difficult to properly see what we have built with a grey default texture, we can press 7 on our keyboard to overlay our map with a grid view, which makes it easier to actually see the things we have built. By pressing 7 again, we can hide the grid view. Using 8 will give us a wireframe view of our map, which is useful to look through it in case we have built stuff below the surface or accidentally created caves no player will ever be able to reach. Both tools are also very useful for debugging purposes, as we will learn in later videos. Outro. That's it. This was the first episode on the Cube Engine 2 and its built-in mapping tools. In the next episode we will learn how texturing works, so we can finally bring some colors into our map. I hope you found this video helpful and we will meet in the next video. Happy editing!